Hi, all. Mark McCabe from Vecna Robotics. I help companies implement and get the most out of autonomous vehicles within their facility. So let me go ahead and share my screen. We'll get started. So I'm going to talk about our workhorse series, which is our pallet truck. And our goal at Vecna is really to help companies increase their throughput, but also help free up the local labor that you have to do more value added tasks. So what can our vehicle take over so that they can really stick on those things that really uh, move the metrics forward? So let's get right into it. So our vehicles are able to work in all sorts of environments and all sorts of facilities. Uh, it's able to do the things that a manual driver can do, cross dock, clearing staging lanes, uh, and really do that non-value add transport across your facility. So it can carry up to 8,000 pounds. Uh, it can go to up to speeds of 5.1 miles per hour. Uh, it has a runtime of eight hours, but also supports auto charging and battery swapping. It can detect all different types of pallets, and it has an onboard touchscreen to allow you to interface with it, um, but also go into the other interfaces that are available with the robot a little later on. So we take an AMR approach to navigation. So you may have heard of AGVs, Autonomous Guided Vehicles. AMR stands for Autonomous Mobile Robot. So rather than guided, this is autonomous. And what we're using is a combination of 3D and 2D sensors to understand the world around us and adapt to that ever-changing environment and make sure that it can continue the work that needs to be done with as minimal touch points as possible. Our goal is obviously zero uh, so that uh, you get you can keep the, that human keep your labor force on the tasks that uh, you have allocated to them, and these robots can go about doing the work that is allocated to them. So, path planning, not following, obstacle avoidance, navigation recovery. Um, I'm going to talk about this on the next slide because it really lays it out well. So again, the difference between AGV and AMR. An AGV follows that path. It has fixed markers or a very fixed point that it or, or path that it has to go on. They're really path followers, and they require their payload to be aligned precisely because it can't really detect where it is. It just needs to know where that it's going to be in the same place every time. So an AMR, on the other hand, can see it, it, something's hanging out in front of me. I need to go around. Uh, you know, someone left a trash can in the middle of the aisle. I'm just going to drive around it because it's safe. They're really path planners. They also can handle multiple priorities and, you know, adapt to those real-time changes in your facility. So let's say uh, I've got an AMR. I've got it assigned to certain tasks, but there's a, an opportunity to take something. I just did a drop-off. There's an opportunity to take something back. It can be dynamically given that task to take that um, that payload back to the other side of the facility to really take that uh, opportunity task on. Uh, it also can detect the payload and adjust to those fork pockets and pick up those pallets, again, minimizing the touch points that your humans have to do in the facility. So AGVs often require a Wrangler, or I'll, I'll call it a Wrangler or a, an autonomous vehicle tender to go reset when there's problems and make sure that everything keeps running with them. The AMR is really a hands-off approach. Um, so let me, let me get into that a little bit, uh, but first let's talk about the safety. So because we have all those, uh, those sensors, we're, we're B56.5 compliant. Uh, we have a third-party safety system that is put onto our robot that can override all of our systems and essentially is there as a way to make sure that these are safe vehicles around people. You can see right there, uh, people are walking around and it, it's waiting. So it's got dynamic safety zones too. So if it's driving faster, those safety zones are again going to get longer. And as it gets slower, let's say it's taking a turn, it's going to adapt those safety zones to the turn to make sure that it's it's always operating at maximum efficiency, but also maximum safety. So as I mentioned before, if the sensors are tripped, let's say something's in the way or, or, or something happens, it's gonna figure out the world around it and just adapt and, and 
go around the obstacle or figure out another way to get there. And that's really the beauty of an AMR solution. So this works great hand in hand with humans. We know there's still some touch points. So we created various interfaces. I mean, the most obvious interface would be, hey, let's just hook right up to your WMS. Let's just give it tasks automatically. But we know there's scenarios where uh, that might not be feasible. So a lot of our clients use this without WMS integration. So you can do task allocation, whether it's on a separate computer and assign it what it needs to do. You can do it directly on the touch screen that you just saw on the, on the robot itself, on the vehicle itself. Um, or you can assign, say, hey, this staging lane, take everything in here to this location, and it's just going to go and, and work without any um, interaction needed. Um, here you're seeing someone interact with a tugger to say, hey, you've got stuff in your tar cart, go to the next spot. It's really, really a great solution for all types of scenarios within your facilities. So the, the one of the key advantages I really want to get into is the remote monitoring and continuous improvement piece. So a lot of systems, you install them, they are great but they kind of get outdated or you get what you paid for on the day that you paid for it. So we actually have a network operations center that is continuously monitoring what's going on with the robot. So a robot has a problem, it's gonna ping uh, up to our network center. They're gonna figure out, you know, in the world, there might be one, two, three percent of scenarios that the robot says, I, hey, I've never seen this before. Can you help me out? The, the human is, in our, our knock center is going to be able to help it get out of that scenario. And again, this is so that you don't have to have a Wrangler or a tender um, in your facility and it's seamless to you. Our, our knock center is gonna be working on this. And part of this is that it's gonna, we're gonna be able to collect data that we can show you and that we also have to fix things uh, continuously. So hey, we've got a heat map of your facility. We always see a strange slowdown in this area. Is there something going on? Uh, we can talk together and figure out, is, is it a choke point because it's really narrow? Uh, is the trash can continuously sliding out or something like that? We'll be able to work together and continuously make the system more and more efficient within your specific facility. And it it just makes it a really beautiful solution for you all. So we have the pallet truck that I talked about, but we also have our tow tractor, which is a tugger. And we've got our counterbalance fork truck. We call it our silverback. It's a low lift. Um, if you have any questions, please stop by our booth. We'd be happy to talk with you all and really love talking about your use cases together. Thank you.